Hunter x Hunter episode 102. Ah yes, he decides to betray his entire species on the basis that someone called him cool. Somewhat relatable. Flattery gets you everywhere. New friend. <laughs> Who's cuter, Knuckles' dead kitty or Parasite Octopus? Power X and X Games. I like where this is going already. Wow, that was a packed sentence. That was a fun one. Can't be smoking around kids like that. Bad influence. Alright, not for your health, it's for your nan. More important than your life. <laughs> Long drag. Even the smell? Oh. Yeah, but it does linger. It drifts. I may have underestimated. Or just total men concealment. He just never moved. He made the cigarette disappear too. That's a minor detail, but actually has huge implications. How far does it go? It's always really convenient and a huge relief when people with invisible powers don't have to get naked. God's alibi perfect plan. Alright, there's a built-in limit right there. Okay, that's really cool. Did it hurt? Can you take damage? I have so many questions. Wow, they really they really went directly into the life parallel. Can you use it to your advantage? This is, a, this is actually a huge statement of trust that he's telling Gon all this. There's a big ask coming. So <laughs> easily swayed. He doesn't, but like he was gonna do it one, one way or the other. Like I said, I think it, it is an odd trait, and it does suggest that Gon is naive. It also, to me, suggests just an extreme level of confidence. If you have everything you could ever need or want, is it even possible to be betrayed? You could say a similar thing for secrets. The best way to keep secrets is to not have any. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Blue is off, teaming up with Parasite Octopus. Roll with it. Oh! <laughs> Well, we can still be partners, I guess. Remember when the Gon was supposed to stay out of trouble and like not do anything and go hole up in a tree, find a hole in the ground, find a cave? I remember. It's odd. It's odd that he's so directly saying this and knows it and uses it. That reeks of I always get my way. Not that he's wrong, but there's a part of that I really like. I really think stubbornness is a is a great tool. I do really love the idea I mentioned about your energy has gravity based on its size that will accumulate other things. There is a real magic to that. It can go really well. It can even be a gift to others. You know, a lot of people want their energy to be wrapped up in yours. People like it when things are obvious and easy and, and pre decided because there's less things to worry about. There's less anxiety. There's more clarity, which brings comfort. The dynamic is more set, so you're not uh, engaged in some kind of subtle competition with the other person trying to figure out your ranking. But obviously, there's a way that can get really selfish in its extreme. I think it works well or works best when the stubbornness, your energy, your determination is something that you can handle and where the consequences are solely born by you or born by others who willingly understand and accept their arrangement. Kalua, you can make an argument that it's his choice, right? But he's a little bit pinned to Gon. His well-being is very much at stake. And yet it is somewhat debatable how much of that is Kalua's choice. Maybe he bears full responsibility for his role in this dynamic. That's one way to look at it. But wherever that line is, it only works to the extent that that's true. That it's Kalua's choice. That Kalua understands the situation. That he understands very clearly the risks of the plan Gon is suggesting or enforcing. That there's no manipulation at all. There's no lying, there's no coercion, there's no guilt tripping. Maybe that's the crux underpinning a lot of the more questionable moments between Gon and Kalua, like the dodgeball thing. I think there are multiple ways to read it based on how much you identify the agreement and willingness. There is a scenario where it's good for Kalua to sacrifice his hands for Gon to deliver that blow. There's another 
here where that exact same thing is underhanded and salvaged from Gon. Also, practically the idea that Gon is the deciding force for all things weakens their comparative advantage, where they're not utilizing Kalua's decision making as much, which is really important sometimes. This guy also getting wrapped up in Gon's energy. Of course you do. Alright, that made me curious. Go a little, little manipulator here. Huh. Who's the manipulator who's getting manipulated? Peggy. Aww. Yeah, I remember Peggy. Beheading is one way to put that. His head was obliterated. Oh, you mean from human times? I was confused as to why that was a reveal. Oh, I was wondering about this. This has probably been explicitly stated and I just missed it, but I was wondering why some of them have two names. Is it that they're remembering their original identities? It's weird little details like that that take on, take on so much extra emotional life and weight after you've lost someone, whether it be death or a breakup. Things you don't think anything of in the moment. I wonder if the royal guard or the king have any memories. That would be very interesting. Close enough. What is the beast? <laughs> I mean, you know. You read that correctly. And Go loves it. What a compliment. I am a beast. This guy's got stacked net abilities. Oh, can, can you transfer it? Like the cigarette, right? Yeah, I had a feeling that cigarette was significant. That was a little preview. Little hint. Still curious what the limits of this are, though. I'm assuming you could... You could probably take damage from some things? Everything except your breath? That's a great level up for Gon, honestly. Yeah, I was kind of sleeping on this team up. I don't know. It's nice to think that way. It's definitely an advantage, but the king is so powerful. Can you even kill him with one hit? Can you even injure him with one hit? It's a lot of faith in Gon. But at one point, at what power level do they become aware that the person with God's plan is making contact with them? It seems like at that level you have one shot and then you expose yourself. How many packs is this guy carrying? This is also a bad sign for the future if this is how you treat your partners. I get that to an extent. This also could be a manipulative tactic. Gon's malleable. Other people bring a troublesome lens into the equation. That was a horrendous 30 seconds for my trust level in this color changing invisible chameleon. I wonder if this isn't directly the idea that because Gon is so sure of his ability to get what he wants, it wouldn't occur to him that he can be used to get what someone else wants. This is, yeah, here it is. It sort of has to be. Okay, so it's not invulnerability. Area attack. Area attack. Clueless yo-yos, for example. That was key. Fair. I also don't like it when people think, I trust this person, so then they can be trusted with your secrets. It's like, no, I told you. I didn't tell them. I don't know them. And you can disappear. You can get his reaction. Oh, it is. It is Knuckle. Is Knuckle a good matchup for the king, then? I don't know. This is sort of a relief. 
a great personal risk to himself. Seems like they've handicapped themselves to do the right thing. He's so soaking in all the power of his shirt, his favorite t-shirt. Dude knows he's probably going into his final battle too. He's busy dying. Oh yes, let's team up. But please don't die, Knuckle. I thought about Knuckle. It crossed my mind that the king is above everyone physically. You probably don't want to face him in a one-to-one -one fight or battle contest. The way to beat him is like nan technicality or some non-direct confrontational tactic. And so in that sense, Knuckle is a great fit, except that Knuckle requires contact and then requires not being contacted. Oh, Finally, long time to see. Was he playing for his life? He was playing for his ear. What is this building towards? This is definitely this is definitely something. <laughs> Did not read that situation correctly. He did not read the room. He's also the smartest in the room. <laughs> oh no, he's reading the rules! <laughs> right before the game. Embarrassing. Humans are unworthy. <laughs> Didn't have enough sugary drinks. What can I say? March comes in like a lion and out like a... Beheading. March comes in like an ant and then doesn't go out. This character actually looks like Rei though. Why didn't you resign 22 moves ago? Oh, we don't like excuses. We don't like excuses. No sugary drinks. Even this is more charitable than I imagined or expected. <laughs> what a counterproductive sentence. Sleep deeply and restfully as if you would die if you didn't. My brain is already good at finding reasons why I can't sleep, even when I'm not being threatened by a god king chimera ant. It's interesting that the king is focusing so much on these mental exercises. If it were just power and control, you think he would be much more interested in flying around the world just crushing everyone. What is he trying to do? Create some kind of apex being himself? No sleep was had that night. I'm impressed by your nine pack. That's true, there's a language to games. There's an underlying language. Same is true for life. You know, if you play one sport, you'll pick up the second sport faster. If you're bilingual, you'll pick up a third language more quickly, most likely. With anything of sufficient complexity or anything that requires a sufficient amount of dedication, you do it long enough or go deep enough, you start to realize that its pattern is a microcosm for life itself or like a lot of other things you find in life. Come to think of it, I don't think it necessarily has to be deep diving into one thing. It might also be possible to get there by getting to a certain minimum level of, of competence in a lot of things. As I like to say, the highest level of casual, a lot of patterns to be found in that too. Another thing I like about that strategy, and maybe this is somehow related to what the king is doing here, one way of conceptualizing intelligence in a way that's very useful and practical for the individual is the ability to take existing things and synthesize new things. It's possible that the more inputs you have, the more nodes of strength you've created, the greater the potential for synthesis of new things. This is, this is also for him very directly to be Nen and fighting. He's reducing things down to pure concept. High, high level of casual, highest level of casual. Diminishing returns. Have you tried Greed Island? Also related that he's the king. People are trying to trap him. Bring him to me. Like no one ever was. What do you do? Besides looking big. And opening curtains. Oh, it's you! It's you! I know you from the ending song. 
後に自分の運命に大きく関わることを I'm very interested. I'm very, very curious to see where this goes. Hunter Hunter is so good at being unpredictable. Like, you think it's going one way and then it goes another. Who knows what the king's journey is going to be, honestly? He's interested. He's doing stuff. He's thinking. He's not a mindless beast out for just, you know, I am the best. I am the king. I will destroy everything. I want to destroy the world because reasons. He's surprisingly slow and deliberate and reasoned. Which is not to say those things don't exist in some part. It's just a much more complex form of it. I have a feeling this girl is going to teach the king. A lot more than Gunji.